do with uh, the rather interesting facts that we have. We're going to have some rather interesting discussions with our guest in the studio, Hassan Ghazali. Did I not say that I stumbled across, across perhaps the most interesting people in all of the country? Well, here you have it all over again. Um, thank you, Hassan, so, so far. You've been really, really uh, providing us with some valuable information. Um, uh, one of the things I wanted to know um, as a lay person who has a fleeting uh, but wants it to be a more significant interest in astronomy, um, what is a, a supernova? I mean, this is another one of those things that had completely, completely enthralled me when I was uh, younger and had developed this interest in astronomy. Can I add, before you do answer this question, that I believe there are a multitude of um, events in the night sky that can grab an amateur astronomer's interest. Anyway, uh, uh, as I was asking, uh, supernovas. Yeah, well, a supernova, very basically, is an exploding star. Okay, like, it's kind of like the sun going boom as well. Yes, it is. The sun, it's a think of a big sun going boom, and then out of that debris forms a new planetary system, a nebula, something like that. So you can look at our solar system, and you can sort of think about the fact that at some point, many, many millions and billions of years ago, a larger star exploded in a supernova, okay. and then we were formed. But, I mean, supernovas don't just happen like that. I mean, I'm sure they come with something of a forewarning or a process before oh, it. I mean, I'm always so basically... In fact, historically, this wow. gentleman, Tycho Brahe, who is a, a great uh, astronomer in antiquity, he just stepped out one day, looked up at the sky, and he said, what's that new star which doesn't, isn't supposed to belong there? Wasn't right. there yesterday? He had discovered a new supernova. The thing is, they don't happen very regularly. That's a fact. But the fact that there's so many millions and millions of stars out there, chances are you might just catch one. Wow. And I wonder one thing, it happened. I one happened in my lifetime, I know for a fact, because I remember reading something in the newspaper when I was in Barcelona around the same time. Could I be mad anything? Mm, <laughs> and I had probably not. been... Uh, anyway, but um, I'm sure one can probably look that up if one is incredibly interested in finding out whether mm -hmm. or not there has been a supernova in my lifetime. But it is it's fascinating stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, does it mean that our star could, you know, our sun could explode just like that without any warning and take us all with it? I wouldn't want to comment on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's already enough darkness around for us to sort exactly. of imagine what would happen there. Just let that one go. And but, uh, what about the other sort of activities that are happening in the sky? Because I read in the newspaper recently that, if it, that Venus was uh, visible to the naked eye. Oh, indeed, yeah. Um, in fact, today, if you step out just after sundown, and just as the sun goes down, just look above. Basically, the sun sets in the west, right? So just look about uh, about two fists above the sun, the size of your fist, and you'll see this uh, dazzling uh, star. That's Venus, and you can see it nowadays. Yeah. Um, it's it, brighter than any other star in the sky at the moment. Well, pretty much. Actually, Sirius, the star, is also quite bright. Oh, but yeah. But Venus, Venus is generally... Sirius is what's known as the pole star. No, 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 no. exact opposite. Okay. Uh, the pole star is Polaris. Okay, yeah, okay. That's Sirius would nowadays be somewhere south. But uh, you can definitely see Venus in its crescent phase. Okay. Um, and, and she certainly looks beautiful nowadays. Was, it, was she brighter like a couple of weeks ago or months back? Because that's when I read about it and that it was apparently at its brightest. Is it no, now? Well, it's pretty much approaching uh, a lot of brightness, strong brightness. Yeah. Okay, so it's still uh, something... That really is worth looking out for. Oh, indeed, it's indeed. Funny. Beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, what about the facilities that we have in Pakistan to, for instance, uh, feed your interest? Okay. I mean, I, uh, I was thinking, for instance, do we have one of those fancy, like, telescopes that you see in observatories? And are there, are there those sorts of facilities that are available to the public? I mean, how can we go about finding out? Well, you see, this is Pakistan. One does have to be a little proactive. One can't just sit back and expect the government will provide this, that, the other. Um, having said that, there are some uh, organizations in, in almost every major city of Pakistan, uh, Karachi, Islamabad, Lahore, um, and some very dedicated amateur astronomers who've invested their own money in, okay. in getting telescopes. So if, you, if anyone, uh, your listeners, uh, would get in touch with these organizations, find them on the Internet, and um, they will have regular observation sessions in cities and they can just join okay, and they so have access and they'll be able to see all these things with a very own eyes. So it's a number of resourceful citizens that have got together mm. and 
A, invested in infrastructure, and then B, actually gone to the effort of forming a group and being regular about updating each other on what's indeed. going on. And they can be located on the net. Indeed, instance. indeed. And this is for every major city in, in Pakistan yes. as well. So yes. that's great to know. And thank goodness for the internet. And well. I also say that, that part of the activities of International Year of Astronomy are that we go out of cities. Okay. We groups go out of cities, go to rural areas, identify schools and other institutions in far flung areas, and actually take our telescopes to them. So we also have that program. So um, I think anyone who's even got a slight bit of interest should really capitalize it on this year. Yeah. Because there's a lot that's going to be happening. This is very interesting. Have you, have you already embarked on this project of taking telescopes out to rural areas and to schools? Indeed. And what's the response been from oh, pupils? Oh, the, the response has been overwhelming. Um, I mean, uh, I think in another couple of days, there's a tour going to the city of Kasur. Um, to sort of share the stars with these people. But very recently we had an event called Star Peace, uh in the SOS Children's Village here in, pa in Lahore. And uh, basically it was very sensational in the sense that children in India were joining us. They were, wow. there, they were, yeah, they were there in this city called Bhuj in uh, Kutch in India. And uh, they were having a session watching the Penumbra Lunar Eclipse. We were here in Lahore and then we had a, you know, a chat over the phone. It was quite interesting. So uh, the response was obviously that these kids, they had been sitting in, in, within these walls, within their homes, and we had taken them from, you know, their place in Ferozpur to Pluto and back. And I think yeah. that made a huge difference, and it just inspired us so much that we decided that this was definitely going to be mainstreamed into every education institution. I think this is fantastic. We've got me all very excited about the prospect of basically spending the evening in, by in, I don't mean indoors. Um, I mean, probably have to forsake the party or two and basically sit on the chat mm -hmm. and look up in the air. I can't think of a better thing to do tonight. <laughs> anyway, before we continue, we've got Michael Mind now with Baker Street. And that was Michael Mind with Baker Street. And as expected, a lot of people are interested. I have Sarah from Karachi texting and saying, information, give me emails, give me contacts, so I can tell my 12-year-old exactly how to go about um, uh, sort of feeding his or her own interest. Yes, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be very interested uh, in figuring out how they can enjoy their own uh, passion for the sky. We will, of course, get back to you with uh, our emails and uh, any contacts or any uh, websites that Hassan will be able to uh, recommend to us. Uh, but before we get back to the night sky and uh, Hassan's uh, wonderful uh, expertise which he's sharing with, with us today, we're going to have Van Morrison with Moon Dance. This is a request by you, I believe. Yes, it is. There you go. This one, just goes, this one goes out to Hassan Ghazali, our guest today in the studio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 